So what is actually a normal range for someone to have a resting heart rate? Obviously, at the top end, we have tachycardia. We kind of draw the line once people start to get over 100 beats per minute. At this rate, we consider this inappropriate sinus tachycardia, and we know it's going to be relative to problems with cardiovagal output, so the brain's ability to talk to the heart to slow it down. On the other end, a lot of times we hear people say, like, as low as you can go is great. We see runners that have super low rates and extreme athletes that will have very low heart rates. But at a point, once we start getting kind of below 50 is kind of a gen general rule. The lower we go, the longer your heart has to actually maintain its stability between beats. There has to be an actual active process to keep the electricity out of your heart in between beats so that you're not sneaking in a rhythm. So the lower it goes, even though that means it's more efficient, there may also be more opportunity for entrant arrhythmias or arrhythmias to start to develop. But whether it's on the low end or the high end, heart rate is actually not the most important feature when it comes to cardiovascular control. Your heart rate is dependent on your blood pressure. So for example, if I have blood pressure that's low, 90 over 50, let's call it, and I have a heart rate that's 70 beats per minute, you would say, oh, heart rate looks great. But you're going to have a problem getting blood flow to all of your major organs in your brain. So like that's not super great either. So what's more important than looking at heart rate is actually looking at blood pressure. And specifically, if we're really getting after it, we want to look at blood pressure that's going into the brain.